In 1756, a captain named Caleb Godfrey sailed his ship, the Hare, along the West African coast, known as the Rice Coast, for many months in search of slaves to bring to America. The Hare was owned by Samuel and William Vernon, who were prosperous slave dealers from Newport, Rhode Island. Newport was the main port in America for slave ships involved in the Atlantic slave trade. Captain Godfrey bought slaves from places such as Gambia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone, but for the majority of the time, his ship, the Hare, remained in the Sierra Leone River. In this river, there was an island controlled by the English that held a prison for enslaved Africans. A ten-year-old girl, who would later be given the name Priscilla, was taken from her home in Sierra Leone and held captive on this island, known as Bunce Island, then called Bent's Island. On April 9, 1756, after purchasing 170 Africans, Captain Godfrey began to sail the Hare from Bunce Island to Charleston, South Carolina. Among the slaves was Priscilla, who would have to endure nearly two and a half months under the deck of the ship. During the trip, 60 of the enslaved captives would die, but Priscilla would survive. More than 40% of all slaves who were brought to America came through South Carolina. The Hare's records showed that it docked at Sullivan's Island, just off the coast of Charleston. When the Hare reached Charleston on June 17th, Henry Lawrence, a slave dealer, placed an advertisement in the South Carolina Gazette, hoping to attract the attention of plantation owners. At the time, South Carolina's leading crop was rice, so slave buyers would offer a great deal of money for people who were taken from this coast since the slaves already had experience with the crop. On June 30th, 13 days after the publication of the advertisement, Elias Ball II, a wealthy rice plantation owner, purchased six children, including the girl Priscilla. He gave each of them an American name and estimated their age. Ball kept incredibly thorough records of his slaves and wrote in his journal, I bought four boys and two girls, their ages as near as I can judge. Sancho, nine years old, Peter, seven, Brutus, seven, Harry, six, Belinda, ten, Priscilla, ten, for six hundred pounds. Ball owned numerous rice plantations. Priscilla was sent to work at Cumming Tea Plantation, but was relocated to others throughout her life. Fortunately, Priscilla would not be among the one-third of enslaved children that died during their first year in America, nor would she be a part of the two-thirds of slaves that died before the age of 16. Priscilla would live on to marry a man named Jeffrey, and they would have ten children together. She would die at the remarkable age of 65 in 1811, which was much older than most slaves lived to. Edward Ball, a descendant of Elias Ball, is the National Book Award winning writer of Slaves in the Family, which Priscilla is mentioned in. He has tracked Priscilla's descendants seven generations to Tomlin Martin Polite, a speech therapist living in Charleston, South Carolina. After learning her ancestry from Edward Ball, Polite was invited by Sierra Leone's government to visit her home country. It was a homecoming journey, and Polite got to meet President Ahmad Tahan Kaba, as well as other well-known leaders. She then visited Bunce Island and the fortress on it where her great-great-great-great-great-grandmother, Priscilla, was once held captive. It is extraordinary that Polite is able to know who her original ancestor was, the dates of the departure and arrival of the ship she traveled to America on, the name of the man who purchased her, and the fact that each and every of her descendants are known to this very day. Polite and her family are extremely fortunate to know this information as it gives them self-identity, and because almost all other African Americans have no knowledge of where they are originally from, let alone the name of their ancestor that first came from Africa.